What we're going to be going over here is solving for multiple product cost volume profit analysis in terms of dollar amounts here. So what we're going to be uh, solving for is some targeted net income before taxes and net income here after taxes in terms of dollar amounts here. Okay, so for cost volume profit analysis, the basic concept is this. This is where your total revenues are going to equal your total cost plus some profit. So we're looking at it in some basic, basic of equations here that we're going to go through and follow through for a problem. So our total revenue here, TR here, would equal our total cost, TC here, plus some profit. And we'll just say that, look at it in terms of net income here before taxes. That'd be some targeted amount here. So our, looking at it here, our total revenues equals our total cost, which is our total fixed cost, plus our total variable cost, plus some net income here before taxes. So we just rearrange the equation here and move our total variable cost over to this side of the equation or subtract it from both sides here. So we end up with our total revenues less our total variable cost or that difference equals our total fixed cost plus some um, profit here, net income before taxes. So our total revenues less our total variable cost, that is really our total contribution margin. And that's gonna equal our total fixed cost plus some profit here, net income before taxes. So what we're gonna be concentrating on when we're solving for these uh, uh, the cost volume profit in terms of dollars is this total contribution margin. We're gonna boil it down to that amount, that number here that we're gonna be dealing with. So we can just, for our calculations here, we'll just go in our total revenues equals our total fixed cost plus our total variable cost here plus some targeted net income here before taxes. So our total revenues is gonna be our S represented by our sales here, and that's going to equal our total fixed cost. And then our total variable cost, it's, going to, it's represented by a sales times some variable unit cost divided by unit price here. Again, plus some net income here before taxes. So we could solve for this here, but what it all boils down to is this. Uh, our, we're going to have to determine our weighted contribution margin ratio here, and that times our sales here is going to equal our total fixed cost plus some net income here before taxes. So that's what we're going to we're going to be working with. We're going to call it a weighted contribution margin ratio here, and that has to be in terms of dollars. So when we're talking about uh, contribution margin ratios, we can really look at in three different terms here. So a contribution margin ratio is really on a unit basis would be some unit price less our variable cost divided by the unit price. So this is going to give us a ratio here. It's not in dollars, but it's in terms of dollars. And then we could further look at it. The contribution margin ratio would be some total variable cost, less our total very uh, total total revenues, excuse me, less our total variable cost, again, divided by our total revenues. And then it could be uh, looking at, in these terms, some unit price times some quantity here, less our variable unit cost times some quantity, again divided by the unit price times some quantity. But nonetheless, we ha if we're going to work with dollars here, we have to determine our contribution margin ratio in dollars here. And we did it here by dividing, uh, looking at it by dividing a dollar amount here in a denominator for each one of these, uh, uh, each one of these solutions here for our contribution margin ratio. We have the units up here, but then again, if we just took our price less our variable cost, it would just be based on units. But when we're, we're dealing with dollars here, we have to divide it by the dollar amount here. And you can see how we factored that in. Okay, so let's look at uh, moving down here. So again, we must solve for the problem in terms of dollar amounts here. And then we know our dollar amounts will be able to convert it into units, but in terms of dollar amounts. so. What we would do here, and we're going to go through a problem here. We're going to just have two different products. When we're talking about multiple products, you'd have any number of different products here. But we're going to just have product X1 here and product X2 here for our example here. And then for each of the products, we have to know a unit price here and a unit variable cost. And then we have to know what they call the mix ratio. That is how much of each one of our products here we're actually selling. So for our uh, problem here, we're gonna look at for product X1, we're gonna have a mix ratio here of 60% or 0.60. That is, we're selling 60% of our products here are being sold as product X1. In product X2, well, the remainder, they would be 40% here, 0 0.40, the mix ratio. So uh, we have to determine that mix ratio for each of our products here. And that's really based on 100% here. So product X1, 60%, product X2, 
40%. So the next thing we have to do, we have to come up with our con contribution margin ratio here based on dollar amounts here. It's not really a dollar figure here, but the ratio is based on dollar amounts. So what we're gonna do here for our contribution margin ratio, again, it works off what we had for that contribution margin uh, ratio here was really some price less our variable unit cost again divided by our price so for product x1 what would that be we have a price here four dollars a variable unit cost here is three dollars so we can go down we can calculate our contribution margin ratio that's simply four our price of four dollars less unit variable cost three dollars again divided by four dollars our price here so that is going to give us 0.25 here for x1 that's our ratio here for product x1 okay so then for product x2 our unit price is eight dollars variable unit cost five dollars here okay so for product x2 would be eight dollars unit our price less five dollars variable unit cost divided by the price here of eight dollars so that's going to give us a contribution margin ratio here of 3.75 okay so we got to figure it out for product x1 product x2 our contribution margin ratio and knowing our mix ratio for each one of them, now we can come up with the weighted contribution margin ratio. And really it's the sum uh, sigma here, E is represented as sigma, or the sum of the contribution margin ratio here times the mix ratio. And we sum them for a different products. So uh, uh, for weighted average contribution margin ratio for product X1 it was 0.25 times the mix ratio of 60% or 0.60 here. For product X1, product X2, what is it? 0.375, the uh, contribution margin ratio times a mix ratio of 0 0.40 or 40%. So just sum those up. So your weighted average contribution margin ratio is going to be 0 0.30 here. So that's the weighted average contribution margin ratio based on dollar amounts here. It's a unit amount, but it's based on dollar amounts. And this is what we're going to use here for solving for our... Uh, our quantities here in terms of or what we're looking at in terms of dollars okay so using this weighted average contribution margin ratio now we can go and we can solve for our, our different situations or solve our problem here all right okay so let's first look at the, what we'd have to in terms of dollars here what we'd have to uh, our break-even point here in terms of dollars so we go back to our equation here the weighted average contribution margin ratio times some sales uh, total sales here is equals our total fixed costs plus some net income here before taxes. So net income before taxes at this break even point will be set that to zero. So just solving for S here, divide, well, we end up here dividing both sides of the equation by our double uh, weighted average contribution margin here. So S equals our total fixed cost divided by our weighted average contribution margin here. Okay, so going to our solution here. So 0.3 was our weighted average contribution margin. S, our sales, equals, in this case, let's say, say our total fixed cost is $300,000. We'll be using that. So our sales here, we just divide both sides here by 0.3. So sales equals 300,000 divided by the weighted average contribution margin of 0.3 here. So our total mixed sales is $1 million. So that's their total sales for all for our, in this case our two different products or all all the products we're looking at so for sales for s1 and x2 s2 here all you take is your total mix sales here one million dollars here times the mix ratio here so for x s1 one million dollars times its mix ratio of 0.6 or 60 percent is going to give us six hundred thousand dollars and then for x2 mix ratio was 0.4 here times a million dollars here total sales so four hundred thousand here for s2 so we got to at the break-even point here we have for s1 we have to sell six hundred thousand dollars worth of sale we have six hundred thousand dollars worth of sales and for s2 it's four hundred thousand dollars worth of sales so now just figuring out our quantities here so just taking our uh, sales amount our total sales amount for each of these divided by its unit price here so for s1 six hundred thousand here in sales and its unit price is four dollars uh four dollars each here so that gives us a quantity here of hundred fifty thousand dollars and for s2 well we have four hundred thousand in sales here and its unit price is eight dollars here so that's going to give us fifty thousand here in in quantities here so x was just our sales total sales here divided by the unit price here. Okay, so we solve for our 
Total sales here at break-even point for S1 and S2 or X1 and S X2 here. And then we're able to determine the quantities here for it each one of those. Just remember, double WCR here was the weighted average contribution margin and the, total, and the sales here for each of them was just represented by the total sales here times its mix ratio here. So that's how you're showing it here. Okay, now let's move on here. Okay, let's say to earn $60,000 here in net income here before taxes. So we have to add in some profit here. So again, our equation, weighted average contribution margin times some sales, plus our fixed cost, plus some net income here before taxes. So we just go with what we had up above here. So weighted, so for 0.3, for our weighted contribution margin times our sales here is equal to our total fixed cost here, 300,000. And let's just say our net income here before taxes, we set at $60,000 here. So again, breaking off our basic equation here, if we solve for S, our sales here is equal to our total fixed cost plus some net income before taxes divided by the weighted average contribution margin here. Okay, so going back to our problem here. So for sales here is going to equal $360,000 here divided by the weighted average contribution margin here, 0.3. And that's going to equal $1,200,000. Million, $1, that's the total sales combined here, what they call the total mixed sales. Again, so just solving for S1 and S2 here for say product X, X1 here, take our total sales here, 1,200,000 times its mix ratio of 0.6 here. That's going to give us 720,000. And then for product X2 or S2 here, 1.2 1, 1 million here total sales times its mix ratio of 0.4. That gives us 480,000. Okay, so uh, to earn a net income before taxes of 60,000, we're going to have to have sales of product X1 here at 720,000 and X2 here at 480,000. And then just solving for our quantities here, just take our sales for each one of those here, divide it by its uh, unit price. So 720,000 here for X1 divided unit price of $4 gives us 180,000 in, in the number of units or the quantity that we have to sell here for X1. And then for X2, uh, its sales amount here, 480,000 divided by its unit price here of $8 gives us 60,000 here. Okay, so we've dead end here to earn a certain amount of net income here before taxes. We set that at 60,000. All right, now to earn $36,000 here of net income here after taxes, just go to our equation here. Our weighted average contribution margin times our sales equals our total fixed cost plus our net income here after taxes divided by one minus the tax rate. So how do we get that here? So if we look at it in terms of our net income here before taxes that we were usually adding to our total fixed cost here, all we would do is we take our net income here after taxes is going to equal one minus our tax rate times our net income here before taxes. So uh, solving for our net income here before taxes, you just divide both sides here by one minus our tax rate. So that's going to be our net income here after taxes divided by one minus our tax rate. So that's how we get our net income here after taxes divided by one minus our tax rate into our equation. But if we further look at it in terms of our solving for S here, say our tax rate here is 40%, so one minus our tax rate is going to be 60%. So we just uh, go what our, normally we have our one uh, net income here before taxes in our equation. So we just substitute our net income here after taxes by, uh, divided by one minus our tax rate into our equation. So our sales here would be our total fixed cost plus our net income here after taxes divided by one minus our tax rate, divided by our weighted contribution margin ratio here. Okay, so going to our problem here. So our weighted contribution margin ratio was 0.3, sales here of S, what we're solving for, equals our total fixed cost here of 300,000, and then our net income here after taxes of 36,000 divided by one minus our tax rate, which is 0.6 here, or 60%, that's going to equal $60,000 here. So uh, adding that to our $300,000 fixed cost, our sales here are $360,000 divided by our contrib weighted contribution margin here of 0.3. That gives us total sales or total mixed sales of $1,200,000. So for solving for X1 and X2, the sales here, just take your total mixed sales of 1,200,000 times their mix ratios. For S1, it was 0.6 so, uh, times 1,200,000 gives us 720,000 here. 
And for S2, mix ratio was 0.4 times our total mix sales of 1,200,000. That gives us 480,000. Okay, so we solve for our earning our, our the amount that we have to uh, uh, sell here for both product X1 and X2 here in terms of net income here of $36,000 at net income after taxes. We've got those amounts. So just looking at our quantities here, all you're going to do is take your sales quantities for each of those and divide them by the unit price. So for X1, 720000 divided by its unit price of $4. Again, is 180000 of unit of X, uh, product number of product a number quantity we have to sell for x1 x2 is just 480,000 divided by its price here of eight dollars so that gives us sixty thousand okay so that's our unit quantities we have to sell in order to earn thirty six thousand of net income here after taxes okay so that'll uh, end our example here where we looked at the break even in terms of dollars here and then we also looked at a break, uh, what we had to earn of net income before taxes and net income after taxes again in terms of dollars and then once we uh, determine the amount of dollars then we could just divide it by the unit price for each of those products that we're looking at and we could determine the quantity we have to sell here so we, we accomplished both uh, I, deals here where we had to determine in terms of dollars and quantities here. But the key was you had to come up with that weighted average contribution margin ratio based on dollars. It's a, it's a unit amount here, but it was based on dollar amounts here. Okay, so that'll end our discussion here on our solving for multiple products here in terms of dollar amounts.